and in the next phase of our church. But a thing that's been a part of our church for all along is about inviting. We want to be an inviting culture, an inviting environment here. And um, so Matt's going to be talking about that a little bit. But before he comes, um, what does this mean about inviting? Inviting someone to the journey, inviting someone to explore God. And so, Katie, other than your political views, which we don't want to hear, um, can you share with us a little bit, this is why we asked you to share, is you've invited people before. And what was that like for you? What did that do for you to invite somebody? Uh, Well, for starters, um, inviting people to church, just I think one thing I had to overcome is like the fear of inviting people. Like there's, you know, you don't want to come off as pushy or just, it can be a little nerve wracking. So annoying just like, or weird about right, it. right. Yeah. Um, just knowing that I can do it. But, um, when I did invite my friends, I think it just came up organically in conversations. So I was able to bring it up like in weekend plans or sharing about how God has helped me through like some hard times, like bringing it up intentionally. Yeah in conversations. And when I had friends come, when I did invite them, um, the feeling that I felt is giddy. I was just so excited that they walked through the doors and I tried to make them feel super welcome and happy to be here. But just, I was excited for them that they were going to experience what I've experienced coming to church and like my relationship. I have a similar story with with some friends, my wife and I invited and seeing them walk across a parking lot, like, wow, they finally came and and, and everybody better shape up here because don't blow <laughs> yeah. this. Like all these thoughts and yes. like fears of like, but they're, they came and they're still a part of it and, and growing with God. And that's just been awesome to see. So anyway, Matt is coming here in just a minute and he's going to continue our series, Increase the Impact. Hey, welcome again. Welcome to week three of our series, Increase the Impact. Welcome to those joining us online as well. I'm glad you all chose to be with us today. And as we were continuing our series, we've been talking all about how we want God to do more in this next phase of our church. We're asking him to increase the impact in our lives and through our church. And so as we've been in the series, we've been looking at this verse in Philippians chapter two. It talked about, for God is the one who works in us to will and to act according to his good purposes. Like God works in us that we might experience his goodness in our life. And then he changes our heart and our focus to work through us in order to act. And according to his good purposes, we get to experience a life of purpose, him working through us. And, and so we talked about last week, and one way we can do that is we all have our time and our talent and our treasures, these resources. We talked about living generously. And, and if we are, that's one way we can increase the impact. And we talked about if we take steps to do that. We looked at this verse in Proverbs, and it talked about how that a generous person prospers. And if we refresh others, that actually refreshes our own life. That as we take steps to let God work through our lives and we give our lives away to others, it actually causes God to work in our life too, to change us from the inside out. And, and, and it not only benefits others as we share with them, but it also changes our life as well. So we've been talking about that. And so we're going to continue the series today. But as before we roll out uh, this morning, I just want to get something off my chest, something I've been kind of frustrated about and really upset about. This has happened actually a couple times uh, recently. Um, It'd be, it'd be like a morning, I'd get up, and eventually I'd get on like social media, and, and I would notice that everyone else saw the northern lights, and, yeah. and I didn't see them. And I've wanted to see them. And I have gone out at night, and I've turned out all the lights around our house, and I've stood out in my yard in the dark, just looking into the darkness. And I get out my phone, and I try to see if I can see it with my phone, and it's just black, and there's nothing and I've driven all around town and all these different places, try to get away from the lights as far as I can. And I drive around late at night. There's one morning, like, I was out to like 1 o'clock in the morning just looking for the northern lights. Nowhere to be found. It's just me 
in my car, standing, and eventually standing somewhere looking and seeing nothing. And there's this guy I follow on TikTok. He's like a meteorologist, and he's always like, the, the borders, the blah, blah, it's going to be out tonight. Go see it. And I go out, and I'm like, nowhere to be seen. And, then the, and I'm like, man, I can't see it. And then I... I go to bed, and I wake up the next morning, and everybody's like, look at these awesome pictures I took. And everyone's showing everything, and I'm just like, man, I didn't see it. Like, I really want to see it. It's like, our house isn't, like, the best spot because we have, like, a bunch of trees to the, to the direct north. And, but even then, like, we've, I've driven around. I've, I've listened to the meteorologist guy. I've, I've stood out in my yard in the dark, and I'm just standing in the dark. We're driving around in the dark. Nothing to be seen. No light to be found. And while I know I found that frustrating, I know that um, that's just like a small thing that I've missed out on, seeing the northern lights. But I wonder how many people in life feel that way, where the darkness is kind of set in their life, where they're just kind of standing in the dark, and it feels like maybe the darkness is set in on their life, not knowing where to turn, just looking for some light. They see other people, and, and, and like they look at their life, and they feel like, man, I'm just in the dark. I wonder how many, maybe people even feel that way this morning. Like, just looking for some light. Jesus shares some words with us about this, and um, that we're looking at, but it actually begins with Jesus as he is the light himself. John chapter 1, it says this, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. Now, if you were here back in... Uh, June, we talked about these different names of God. And so we have like the word of God, like God can speak his words of life to us. But we talked about how in that series, how it was very typical in Hebrew writing to take an attribute of God and to kind of talk about that as God himself. So we have here the word of God is actually talking about Jesus. Jesus was there from the beginning, was with God. And it says, through him, all things were made. With him, nothing was made uh, nothing with, without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the, and the life that was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Here we see Jesus is the light of life for all mankind. And I, I just wonder how many people are looking for light and just feeling like the, and said the darkness has set in their life. The darkness has came and it's settled in as they've experienced the, the struggle of trying to figure out who they are or what to do with their life or how to make ends meet or even just trying to get through the week to make it to the weekend and just feels like there's this darkness that has set in or they're just stuck in the grind and they're trying to get ahead but they're just feeling lost in the dark, empty, maybe from pa- facing the pain or the struggle they feel like the darkness has set in, or maybe even because of loss of a friend or a loved one, as they face death, there's just hopelessness. The dark has set in. Maybe it's brokenness in relationships or bitterness or anger or rage or pain. It feels like the darkness has set in. Or maybe it's the weight of past mistakes or regrets, and it feels like the darkness is just covering their life. Maybe just looking around this world and seeing it's just full of hate and war and people being mean to each other and just seeing all the suffering, and it just feels like the darkness has set in. But I come back to these words of Jesus. He says that he is the light, and the darkness won't overcome him. I think we can feel that darkness in our life sometimes. Maybe we even feel that in major ways. But I want you to know today that Jesus is the light of life, And he is brighter than whatever darkness you're facing. That you can still have hope, you can experience light, and you can experience life. Because this is the words of Jesus. John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says this, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus came, and he's bigger than the darkness. The darkness will not overcome him. And he says, if we're willing to walk with him, that we can experience his light in our life. That as we walk through dark times, it might feel like the dark is setting in, but it doesn't have to overcome us. Because he, his hope can shine through even in those darkest moments. I know I've experienced that, and 
and I hope that, that you have too, and I, and I know that as life goes, there's always ups and downs, and we, can, we need to remember that. But I just wonder how many other people that we know have no idea about that, that they're just wandering around in the dark, lost, trying to make sense of it, but it can, it, this feeling alone and hopeless. According to the last uh, census that was done, less than 20% of people in Muskegon County uh, attend church regularly. Um, the, the number keeps going down. <laughs> it's less and less uh, every year. And while, like, while like, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian, that usually is kind of a marker of having a relationship with God. And so what we see is that a number of people in our community, people that we know, have no light, no hope. And if the darkness comes and sets in in their life, what are they going to do? Just, just me a picture of this. Like, I want us to feel some urgency about this, to realize that these are our friends and our families and our coworkers and people in our life. Like, if you go to the gas station on the way home today and you fill up with gas, if there's four other people pumping gas at the same time as you, chances are that they don't have that same hope. When you go to school tomorrow and you're in class and maybe there's, you know, 28, 30 people in your class at school, chances are there's only five other people in their class besides you that have this relationship with God and the light that he can give. Or if you go to work and there's 50 people in your shop or in your office, chances are there's only like six other people, seven other people in your shop or in your, in your workplace that have this relationship with God. If you're driving down your street and there's, you know, like 30 houses on your street, you know, five or six houses, say that they're the ones that follow after God and have this hope and this light. There's people all around us where the darkness sets in and they have no hope. And yet Jesus came to be the light. And what are we going to do about it? Well, here's what Jesus calls us to. Matthew chapter 5, we have some words of Jesus recorded for us. And here he says this. Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on. Now, like salt these days, like we don't use salt like they did back in Jesus' days. Like for us, we might use salt to like make things taste good. Like I had a steak last night and I put some salt on it and it makes it like it enhances the flavor, right? You get the flaky salt and you, just, you know, <laughs> do that kind of thing and uh, it makes it taste good. And, um, like, that's what we use salt for. Back in this time of, of history, people used salt as to preserve the, the, the life of food. You would add it because you didn't have refrigeration and things like that, so you would, you know, use it as to preserve the life of the food. And so here Jesus is saying, when he says, you're the salt of the earth, he's like, it's, it's our job to help preserve the light of life in people in this world, to be the, the thing that enhances the flavor of life because we have this light that we have to share. He goes on to say this. He says, you are the light of the world, a town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Here he says, it's like a town up on a hill. Now, in like Israel, it's actually a lot of like hills and valleys, like not full-scale mountains, but like it's kind of mountainous there. And so they would build their cities up on top of a hill because there was a lot of advantage to that. One is that you're better fortified. That You know, you build a fortified city and it's harder. You have the upper ground as people are trying to maybe attack you. And so there's safety and security in that. Also, if you were traveling you would see the city up on the hill. You would see the light, and it would give you some hope that you're going in the right direction. It would guide you. It would give you this hope, like, we're almost there. And so a city on a hill gives light as a way to, of security, of hope, of direction. And he says in, in the same way, he calls us to be that kind of light to the people in our life to help them find direction and hope and guidance and safety and security. And he says... He ends it saying, you're, you're the, the light of the world. He says, let your light shine before others, that they might see their, your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the call that Jesus has for us, 
to be the, he is the light and to let his light shine in our lives and through our lives. We might share that with others. They might see what we do and glorify our Father. You know, this has been really the heartbeat of our church since day one. We wanted to be a place where we could reach people who weren't being reached. There's a lot of good churches in our community, but there's a lot of people who aren't, uh, that are still stuck in the darkness, and they're not reaching them. And so we wanted to be a place that was reaching the people that other churches weren't reaching. And so we started this place as to be kind of that city on a hill, to be that light that would shine out. And so throughout our history, we have done stuff like like beginnings class that's just starting, so people can come and ask questions and explore, to be a place where it's easy to invite someone to, to be a place where we challenge each other to take these steps, to be a place like we have um, Adam on staff. He uh, does our journey teams, but we job share him with Youth for Christ so he can be in the schools, be in the light. It's like all these things that we do are network projects, things like that, to be out in the community that people might see our good deeds and praise our Father and glorify Him in heaven. This has been the heartbeat of who we are, and as we think about this next stage of our church, we don't want to just settle in and be like, yeah, we've done a good job at that, because there's so many more people. There's so many more people out there that, that don't have this hope, and we're not, I'm, I'm not okay with that. And I want us to do whatever we can in order to help them see the light, to find hope, to find this God who can give us direction and, and a f- a safety and hope in whatever what we're facing. And so as we've been talking about in this next phase, like we want to do some things as a church in order to increase the impact, in order to shine brighter as a church. So we've been talking about some of these things. One of those things is, is that we want to, um, like we talked about the mailers. We send mailers out as a way to invite people to come and explore God. Like That's something we want to do as a church. We want to do that more often so that more people can have that opportunity to, to be invited to our church. We talked about another thing in, in the next stage is like our network teams to um, provide food trucks out in the Fruitport area. And we're still going to be doing things like yard ambush. Like we got that coming up in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to be doing a s- special projects at Christmas time. We have a lot of things that we're doing coming up. And we want to do some more things, more than just those regular things we do, like these food trucks, because it's a, a way that we can shine this light so that people can see our good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven. We talked about doing things like uh, sending teens to camp and and allowing them to invite their friends and making it easier for them to go. We talked about uh, sponsoring Luke to be in the schools. These are all ways we want to increase the invites as a church, things we're going to do as a church. And so we have a lot of things that we will continue to do that we've, that we've done for a long time, beginnings class, these network projects, but we have some bonus things we want to do to try to increase our invites as a church. But those are things we're going to do as a church. What about us as individuals? We've been praying throughout this series for God to work in us and through us individually and as a church. And if we're going to shine brighter, we all need to shine that light. It talked about like taking your light, not hiding it under a bowl because you want to share that light with others. Well, I know for some of us, um, maybe we've done a good job at, at holding that light out. Maybe there's been times when we have maybe kind of hidden it under a bowl. This is the time for us to all shine together as we go into this next phase. Because just think, if each one of us would be committed to inviting someone and bringing them to church and helping them explore God, if each one of us would do that, think of the difference that would make. To not just rely on, you know, hopefully someone will get a mailer and they'll show up, but if each one of us would stop and look at those people around us in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, at our school, if we would look and say, like, man, there's... A lot of people here who don't have that hope, and I'm going to do something about that. I'm going to ask God to work in me and through me. And if each one of us just bring one person to come explore God, think of the impact that would be because we're all shining brighter. um, There was a time when I was working at this other church, and we was it was Christmas Eve, and I thought it would be cool if we would we all lit our candles. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we could bring all those candles together and, and, and make it like one brighter light? And so we had these big bowl of snow, and people came and put their candles in the snow. 
and it turned into an inferno. And I had to actually run out the back door and throw the candles out in the yard because it was so big and it was getting out of control. It was a great idea. The concept was good. The execution, not so great. <laughs> but the idea, was it did, it did accomplish what I was hoping for. I mean, it was like a candle by itself, it, was, it gave some light. But when it all came together, it was a big infernal ball of light. It was great. It was big. But it, it was a bonfire that deserved to be outside, not inside the building. But anyways, <laughs> the idea is there. You know, it's, 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 it shines brighter when we all come together to do that. And so I want to encourage you to increase the invites in your life. Your invite, one invite could change everything for someone else. Just one invite. Like, who, who could you invite? Think about that. And maybe you've been doing this. I mean, we've talked about this throughout our history. Maybe you've been inviting. Well, well don't, don't give up on that. We all have new opportunities. But also, I just know that there's people that I've invited for years and years and years and they finally showed up. Now, you don't have to be weird or pushy about it or things like that. You're just looking, like Katie was saying a little bit earlier, this, and as we're going through life, organic conversations, opportunities to invite them to come to church. But it's more than just that. It's like you have a story to share of how God is working in your life, and your story can make a difference in someone else's life. So we want to invite. We want to share our stories. We want to share God's story. We want to look for more opportunities to shine brighter. Some things I want to maybe encourage you to think about is on the um, tables in the, as you came in, I don't know if you noticed this, there's a couple things. One is there is an invite card for the next series we're doing. In November, we're starting a new series called Clarity in the Chaos. And we're going to be talking about the election season, about we're talking about um, just in this world, it seems like there's just wars and hurricanes and scandals and all of these things. And we're talking about how to not let the chaos consume our lives. And so we're, that's a great, this is a great series you'll be able to invite someone to. And then right around the, that, it's like we're getting close to Christmas time already. So after November comes December, and that's like just around the corner. And so um, Christmas is a great time to invite someone. People seem to be more open to coming at Christmas time. And so this is some great opportunities to maybe increase our invites coming up. So there are some invite cards for that next series there on the table. You can grab one of those, and we'll have some Christmas ones coming in the near future. There's also 14 days of prayer guide there. And so there is, um, what we want to do is we want to end this month and this whole series by really just asking God to do more and praying. And so there's a 14-day prayer guide that we can ask God to continue to work in our lives and through our lives and in our church and through our church. And so I want to encourage you to grab one of those as we're continuing to think about how God can do more in and through our lives in our church. But again, if we're going to increase the impact, we're going to have to increase our invites. So a couple questions I just want to leave you with. How can you be a light? It, at, maybe at your school or your workplace or your neighborhood, how can you be a light? Or maybe you, you've been trying to. Maybe the question is, how can you shine brighter? What can you do to shine brighter? And maybe this is just thinking of, of who can you invite? Who can you invite to come and join you? And, and how are you going to go about that? I want you just to consider those questions, and Mark and Katie are going to come and just give us some more thoughts. But I just want you to take a minute and consider those questions. Hopefully he had a few uh, seconds there just to kind of reflect on that. And um, as I was thinking about th those questions and how do I shine brighter, how can I um, in increase God's light into people around me? And um, I mean, I can think about that like for us as a church, but I'm trying to really answer that for, for me and my own life <clears throat> as I go through my day. Um, one of the things that I felt like I could grow in or maybe how I could just kind of take a step in this would be 
um, to think about how can I share something about God in my regular conversations or in my interactions as I go throughout the week, whether it's in my neighborhood or <clears throat> maybe someplace I go, um, like, you know, get, go, going to get gas or maybe it's, you know, if you're at the store or places like that, like in just in the rhythm of going throughout the day, how can I share something about God more in my life? And not to like get all like, let me share you this long message with you and tell you everything about it, but just to kind of work that in the conversation and, and to be a little bit more intentional about that. Because I really, I really believe how God's impacted my life, a couple things, is I have found God's strength in my life through difficult times. And I have felt God's guidance um, when like the things in the, of the future seem very uncertain. Like I don't know, I don't know what we're doing, and I don't know where we're going. But there's been a sense of God's guidance in that. Well, those are some simple things I could share. So I would, I really feel like I need to grow and would want to grow into how do I just share something about God um, in my conversations and shine His light into their life, and that may even be a part of the inviting to the journey. Because I, because I, I want them to come here, but what I really want is want them to know God. And those have to go to, together. And so that's just me personally, as I'm kind of reflecting on this and increasing the invites, increasing God's light in people's lives. Like, I think I just need to be a little bit more aware and a little more intentional as I'm walking through my days and, and how that goes. So you got any thoughts, Katie, of how you've been experiencing this or how do you like to grow? I feel like you read my answer because that's pretty much how, where I was going to go with it. <laughs> well, what's that um, look like for you, though? Or how? Well, what Matt was just sharing um, really hit home for me where he was talking about like being a light up on the hill or sometimes our light is uh, shadowed by the bowl, however he said that. I feel like I've been in a season where I've kind of had a bowl over my light. Like I haven't been intentional. I haven't been sharing how God has been working in my life. And just recently, it's funny how God's timing is with all of this. Um, I was able to share that light. And so this is how long it's been since we've been at church. It's been at least nine weeks because nine weeks ago I broke my ankle in a couple spots. And so I was laid up and, um, you know, was like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to be hurt. We, we got all these things to do. So after the bone healing process, I, was, I had to start physical therapy. So I was going weekly, by, or twice a week. And so I was getting to know my physical therapist. And um, just in conversation, she's like, well, what do you do for work? And I was like, well, I recently stepped down from my position at church. And now I'm, you know, full-time momming and uh, coaching their sports and, you know, being a taxi driver for them. And she's like, oh, um, what church? And I was like, oh, Journey Church. And I just went into our church and, like, what it's done for me and, um, you know, how long I worked here. But, like, so I haven't done that in so long. And it it like lit a light up in me and it lit a light up in her because then just this week, walking into my physical therapy appointment, I saw a fellow journeyer, I don't know, <laughs> Kate. <laughs> and so we that's got to we, catch up real quick. That's and, what we do with the journey is yeah. we all do physical therapy. We all get <laughs> hurt and go to physical therapy <laughs> together. So we got to catch up with her and then my physical therapist was like, well, how do you know Kate? I was like, well, we go to church together and I got to share with her like, I remember when we played kickball against each other like way back when. Yeah, you won. I'm still bitter about it, which is why I brought it up in physical therapy. Um, but so again, I got to bring that up and she was like, oh, I got to check out the journey. Like, yeah. I think I'm going to add them onto my list of churches to visit. And I just yeah. like that was so little. And I happened to have that in a conversation starter of like where I worked. And a lot of us here haven't worked here, but you can bring it up in conversation like what we've been talking about, just like organically, like what did you do this weekend? Oh, I did this on Saturday, watched football, and then Sunday I went to church, and man, we're, we're learning about this. Like just a quick mm -hmm. couple sentences. And I think um, not only are you doing your responsibility as a Christian of um, sharing, being that light, but it, it can actually do something for you too. Yeah. So. And... <clears throat> I feel like this is just, for me, some words that come to mind is intentional. Yeah. Because we can also be like, all right, <clears throat> I want to be thinking about intentional with my neighbors or intentionally sharing, sharing God's light or inviting somebody. But, there's, but I think part of that is just an awareness. Because, like, you got to go to physical therapy. Like, you got to get in and get out because you got to go to the next thing. Right. And, then, and then we got to go do this and we got to go to this. And sometimes it's just we just are flying through our lives. And so it's a little bit it's like, can I slow my life or my brain enough 
to make space to just even be aware of sharing God's light. And maybe you guys can all relate to that too, because I think we all can feel that at times. But I think just this kind of really all goes back to what Matt was sharing about, um, <clears throat> I mean, g- g- people are walking in darkness. Mm-hmm. And maybe sometimes you feel like you are too. And the biggest, best, only hope we have is Jesus. That, that is where our hope lies. And if we're looking for it in other places, it may last for a little while, but it's going to end. And it's almost like, do I care enough to be aware and intentional? Mm-hmm. Like, this is really important. It's important to us as a church, and we want it to be important to us as individuals. And so let's, let's all take that kind of a step to answer those questions. And what does it look like for us to shine God's light, to be inviting others, and to continue what the journey's really been about for many years, but what's it mean for us as a church, us here now in this time? Um, So let's just pray together. And as we wrap this up, and uh, let's ask God to guide us and to uh, even prompt us as we go. God, thank you first for what you've done in our lives. Thank you for um, the hope that you've given each of us in our own darkness. And... Will you give us the courage to be intentional, to be aware? You, your light is in our lives. Help us to share that with others. Help us to show that to the world around us as, a, as an expression of gratitude to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We invite you to stand. Um,